X-Play, TV's most watched video game show. Today on X-Play, we have a world broadcast premiere hands-on demo of Grid, the ultra-fast, high-octane racing game that takes the Toka Race Driver series to the next level. Plus, don't lose your head. We'll review Dark Sector, the bloody new shooter that lets you slice and dice your way through enemies. And get those pre-orders ready. We'll preview 2008's big ones, Street Fighter 4, Fable 2, and Grand Theft Auto 4. It's game time. the shows that swears it'll pay back that 20 bucks it owes you. No, we're not going no. to. I'm Adam Sessler. And I'm Morgan Webb. We're coming to you from the G4 Studios in Los Angeles on Tuesday, March 25th. On today's show, we'll review the game that puts Glaive, the Resident Evil 4, and communism in a blender, Dark Sector. Plus, we're going to demo Grid, the latest installment in the Toka Race Driver series from Codemasters, as well as give you the latest... Metal Gear Solid 4, GTA 4, and Street Fighter 4, 2008 big ones. But first, Morgan's got all of the day's top stories in our gaming update. Ubisoft has announced they've greenlit plans to create a Tom Clancy-inspired MMO. The publisher recently acquired the intellectual property rights to the Tom Clancy name, giving them royalty-free creative freedom over the brand. The acquisition includes video games, movies, related books, and merchandising. While gameplay details regarding the MMO are unknown, future-proof rifles and a world full of bad lighting are features likely to make an appearance. Microsoft has taken action against Xbox Live cheaters, gamers who have been identified as serious offenders or who have violated Xbox Live's terms of use will notice their gamer score has been reset to zero. Even better, those identified will find their accounts have been clearly labeled as cheaters for the entire Xbox Live community to see. Awesome. A new internet rumor points to a $90 price tag for the upcoming release of We Fit. A GameStop release list was leaked onto the internet and revealed a $10 pre-order option. No official price tag has been announced, but Nintendo has promised to launch a huge marketing campaign for their little box of exercise. We Fit is currently scheduled to be released on May 19th. And finally, the April cover of EGM has listed the existence of 50 Cent 2. While the first game did sell surprisingly well, we're hoping the sequel is just a really bad April Fool's joke. Well, that's all for today's gaming update. Be sure to visit us on the web at g4tv.com slash xplay to continue getting all of today's up-to-the-minute video game news. But now, let's go over to Adam, who has our... And I had hopes for that game. Well... On the last version, you should left behind the wheel of a high horse powered machine. But thankfully, racing games take away the risk of me hitting another retaining wall. Put on your driving gloves. I'm about to go hands on with Grid. Codemasters, the creators behind 2007's off road racer Dirt, are set to release the latest installment of the popular Toka Driver series. Grid will push you behind the wheel of classic and brand new race cars and take you to official courses on three different continents. There's a revamped career mode, different racing styles, and an astonishing damage system to highlight every wrong turn you make. Joining us today is Alex Grimbley, senior producer for Codemasters. Thank you so much for coming by and bringing Grid with you. Um, first off, this game looks absolutely amazing, it's just the, the graphics themselves. But it is a racing game, and there are always a lot of racing games every year. What's going to set this one apart? Uh, we're really pleased with the, the way it looks, obviously. We think it's really cool. So we think that sets it apart. But one of the key things that we think is the, the in-race excitement. Uh, we're saying Grid is all about the race, so it's about the excitement that happens from start to finish and, and everything you know in between in the race. It's not about modding your car. It's not about collecting cars. It's just the pure excitement of a race. Because really, at the end of the day, that's what a racing game should be exactly, about. Exactly, exactly. Now, um, is, is, is the game played, is, is there any arcade qualities, or is this just a straight-up simulation here? No, it's not a simulation. It's not an arcade. It's kind of like Gotham. It sits in between, so you can pick up and play it. You get on with it really well. 
for the hardcore kind of simulation guys, they can tweak and they can modify the game, so it will really suit them as well. So it's in between both. Now, obviously, on the visual level, this game is clearly going for realism. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very evident in the damage that, that can occur in the game. I mean, how does that work inside of the game? And like, what did you do to accomplish that? Uh, well, we worked on dirt previously, and we rewrote the damage entirely for that. So every part of the car has its own physics, its own uh, material types, its own qualities, and each one breaks apart in exactly as it would do in real life. So there's a lot of effort goes into producing each of our cars uh, to make sure they damage realistically. So I guess you can learn how much you can damage a particular car and still be able to drive it there on the course. Yeah, exactly. We have a damage test bed, much like you, you see in a real world with crash test dummies. We have the same thing in game as well. So we just test and test, fire our cars and, and see how they break apart. It's really cool. Now, in terms of the tech that's behind the graphics and the physics that's happening in the game, what were some of the challenges of trying to bring that to what you have here in Grid? Um, one of the main challenges is obviously just fitting in all the physics, all the calculations that we're doing to make it look so visually impressive whilst you know, having all the physics. A lot of our competitors don't have uh, deformable tire walls, barriers, cars, all these parts that come off. So that's our biggest challenge, making sure it looks as good as it does whilst also having all the physics running in, in the background that the player doesn't see. And what are the types of races that players will be able to expect from Grid? Uh, there's, there's loads of different types of races. Uh, we've got kind of drift events in Japan, downhill two-gay events. Uh, in the US, we've got city-based tracks, uh, demolition derbies, uh, GT cars. In Europe, we've got more licensed tracks like Le Mans, um, licensed circuits as well, based in Europe. All right, you just described a lot of stuff. How many tracks can we expect to be playing inside of the game? Um, there's about 50 tracks. There's about 95 routes, I think, within the game. So yeah, there's, there's quite a lot of variety, but they're all really cool, really exciting, fun tracks. There's no dull tracks just for the sake of them being in there. They're all cool. Thank you. That sounds good. Um, now, in, obviously, it's a racing game, so mm -hmm. cars. How many licensed cars are you, are you going to be able to drive inside a grid? Uh, we've got 50 cars. Uh, which we know is not as many as our competitors, but the cool thing about these cars is they're all race cars. You can't go into the shops and buy them. They're only race cars. They're the best cars you can get, so hence there's only 50 of them. And then obviously multiplayer, it will be available for grid? Yeah, that's right. There'll be 12 player online. Oh, great. And there'll be full damage, full, full grids, etc. And everything's available from the start. So. Oh, great. Well, obviously, this is the full package I've been looking for in a racing <laughs> game. Thank you so much for stopping by. And remember, grid should be out this summer, and stay with us. X-Play will return right after this. Coming up on X-Play, Kristen Holt is in the studio with a Halo 3 skull-finding sheet that will make CSI jealous. Then we get a sneak peek of tomorrow's zero punctuation review of Zack and Wiki today. Plus, find out where your money's going. We preview all the big titles coming out this year. Stay tuned. <laughs> So lately I've been hearing rumors that the PS3's price is going to drop again. I was just wondering if you could confirm or deny these. Welcome back to X-Play. Thank you for your question, Matt. I would love to know where Matt's getting these rumors from. Well, the idea that there might be a price drop sometime in the future for a console, yes, something will have its price drop sometime in the future. You know, if you really want one right now, I'm thinking maybe you should get one because they just won the Blu-ray war. Uh, they're not doing it tomorrow. Right, exactly. I think the only reason we're going to see a PS3 price drop is if we see an Xbox 360 price drop. That could possibly happen, but probably not until the end of the year. Yeah, so if you want one, you should just get one now. And right. then I mean, also, if you want a good bargain, there is the the 80 gig Special Metal Gear Solid 4 edition that's going to be coming out. It's got two Dual Shocks. Right. That's not a bad buy. It is $500, so that might be out of your budget. I don't know. <laughs> well, now Kristen Holt is here with a cheat that will have Master Chief looking like Hamlet talking about poor Yorick. Kristen, my liege. Thanks, Morgan. Yesterday I showed you how to grab two skulls in Halo 3, and today I've got the next ones on your list and one of them will be handy for a special occasion. You're back on the hunt for more hidden skulls in Xbox 360's flagship shooter, Halo 3. And after muscling through the first mission, you're also ready for a little R&R &R back at home base. Upon your arrival, the red carpet's rolled out and Marines are starstruck like 13-year-old girls over Zac Efron. No way. A Spartan? For real? Greeted by the commander herself in the UNSC's underground headquarters, the Crow's Nest, she enlightens everyone where they'll soon be going. To war. During this mission, you'll find two hidden skulls. The Black Eye Skull, which forces you to melee an enemy to gain your shield back, and the Grunt Birthday Party Skull. 
This skull will literally make a grunt's head explode. Just remember to always start the mission from the beginning in order to unlock the skull. To locate the black eye skull, head toward the back of the room and jump onto the beam supports near the large pipe overhead. Jump onto the pipe and follow it to the end. No problemo. The grunt birthday party skull is found a little further into the mission. You'll fight your way through the base and neutralize Covenant forces inside a pelican hangar. Once the hangar is clear, head back to the command center. A giant bomb has been set up to cover your tracks during the base evacuation. After arming the bomb, you'll end up fighting several brutes and a chieftain. Laying your enemies to waste, follow the open door and drop down a small chute. Now you'll be facing a corridor with pipes on both sides and drones crisscrossing between them. At the end of this tunnel, peek over the edge. You'll see a narrow ledge marked with a small arrow. Carefully drop down and you'll discover the Grunt Birthday Party Skull. Easy as one, two, three. Today's cheat is brought to you by Columbia Pictures 21, only in theaters on March 28th. Be sure to check out G4TV.com slash cheat for the latest tips and tricks. But for the ultimate in cheating, tune into X-Play this Thursday for an exclusive sneak peek of 21, where you'll see a different set of cheaters at work on the casino floor. Right now, I'm going to send it back over to Adam. Thank you, Kristen. Well, Bungie said they're not making Halo 4, but if a new installment is made, who would you want to develop it? That's today's X poll. Should it be Gearbox, 2K Marin, or Free Radical? Log on to G4TV.com slash XPlay and let us know. We'll have the results later in the show. Stay with us. We'll be right back with Zero Punctuation's take on Zach and Wiki. Mm, right after this. Up next on X-Play, we'll hear Ben Yahtzee Crozier's fast-talking, foul-mouth take on Zach and Wiki in his latest Zero Punctuation review. Plus, we'll preview our big ones, all the games you need to look out for in 2008. You don't want to miss it. Welcome back to X Play. It's Tuesday, which means we channel Miss Cleo and glimpse into the future to take a sneak peek of tomorrow's zero punctuation review of Zack and Wiki Quest for Barbaro's Treasure. Let the yellow hilarity begin. Once again, the Wii proves itself some kind of patron deity of gimmicky, pointless. Every time you use a tool or item, you have to make an equivalent gesture with the Wii mode, but half the time, the movement of the on screen tool bears only rudimentary similarities to the gesture you're expected to make. The one that sticks out in my mind is when I was expected to turn a big horizontal wheel, and none of the movements that seemed obvious caused the damn thing to budge an inch, so I ended up randomly waving the Wii mode around like it was an uppity bat, trying to find out through trial and error which of the many possible movements the game was thinking of. I would say that I'd have preferred the game to not showcase the Wii's exotic abilities, but I'm pretty sure that was the whole idea. Come to think of it, Wank and Sticky is a game with a lot of needless attachments, like the fact you can buy hints. To totally useless while the internet still exists, or the practice of awarding points based on how quickly you solve puzzles, which I frequently took personally. But if you complain about unnecessary additions, you're just being a tosser. It's like complaining about, say, a perfectly good hot dog because the vendor is the Boston Strangler. You can still enjoy the hot dog and just try not to make eye contact. <laughs> Zero Punctuation's full uncensored review of Zack and Wiki only at EscapistMagazine.com. And X-Play will have new previews every Tuesday night. Uh, so Yahtzee has a habit of skewering bad games with foul mouth frankness. In today's X-List, we have some games we hope he gets his hands on. Here are the top five worst promotional game tie-ins. Number five, we find the collection of Burger King games, Big Bumpin', Sneak King, and Pocket Bike Racer. The only thing creepier than the soulless eyes of the Burger King is being able to look through them. 
Number four is Carnival Cruise Line Tycoon, a game that features outbreaks of Legionnaire's disease and stealth kills on your girlfriend. Number three is Mall of America Tycoon, which features an attraction called Camp Snoopy. I thought this meant you were supposed to wait at a Snoopy spawn point and euthanize him repeatedly, but I was sorely mistaken. Number two is Judge Dredd for the Sega Genesis. It tries to soil Contra's good name with some outright thievery and will literally leave you stuck on the first screen. It's still not as bad as that movie. And number one is the Toyota Yaris racing game. Although you can equip your Yaris with a Gatling laser in-game, I have yet to find a Toyota dealer that offers this option. I guess I'll just have to stick with the Tech 9 in my glove box. When I play returns, we'll tell you about some of the biggest titles of 08. Don't move. We'll be back. Next play, one of iTunes' best podcasts of 2007. Or call 1 800 372 4052 or visit us on the web. Welcome back to X Play. Earlier in the show, we asked you who should develop Halo 4. We put your choices in the Vototron 5000, and it looks like the current leader is Gearbox with 55%. For some games that actually are on the horizon, let's go over to Adam. Ah, uh, games we can actually play. Wow. Now, there's nothing wrong with small games. I've been told it's not how big a game is, it's how you use it. That was a penis joke. And here are some of 2008's big ones. The AAA titles we'll be playing with later this year. You can't talk about 2008's biggest games without bringing up next month's heavy hitter, Grand Theft Auto 4. The latest development in what could be the biggest game of the year is that Rockstar's ambitious multiplayer plans were recently revealed. GGA 4 will support a whopping 15 modes of play and support up to 16 gamers at a time. Developers revealed modes with names like Hangman's Noose and Turf War. So we're willing to bet things are going to get pretty bloody. Please, no more killing. Sorry, lady. We definitely can't promise that. I mean. <laughs> Set for a June release, we've got new info about Metal Gear Solid 4. If you pre-order the game now, you'll get into the exclusive online beta for Metal Gear Online. As if that weren't enough, you can buy a special bundle, which includes a limited edition Steel PS3. Some interesting news on the gameplay front. Developer Kojima Productions revealed that they are removing some elements that use the motion-sensitive six-axis controller. Speaking of high-profile sequels, the makers of Street Fighter 4 still won't commit to a firm release date for their latest arcade brawler. But a whole slew of new info just hit the street. Developers have stated that they want to bring back the cast of familiar characters as opposed to the complete recasting that was Street Fighter 3. And Capcom revealed two new characters, Crimson Viper, a sexy redhead who uses vicious flame attacks, and Abel, a French martial artist who, you guessed it, has amnesia. The makers of Fable 2 got us excited when they recently announced that the game will feature seamless jump-in, jump-out multiplayer. Both players can affect the storyline. For example, in this clip from a recent demo, your tag-along friend brutally kills your husband. Creator Peter Molyneux also announced that you can play Xbox Live games that let you gamble for in-game money that you use in Fable 2. Well, the meter's about to run out, so we're leaving. But we'll be back tomorrow with another all-new X-Play at 8. On tomorrow's show, we'll finally give our grade to Bully Scholarship Edition for the 360 now that the patch has been released. Plus, we'll bring you our Sweet 16 picks for the NCAA Tournament. Don't listen to people. Listen to computers. It's all about the Bruins. And we'll review the latest Command & Conquer installment, Kane's Wrath. And on Thursday, we'll have the new GTA 4 trailer. See you tomorrow.